Hi, or oh, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. It has been cold recently, but a big change is now taking place. So without further ado, let's see how things could develop as we head through the next two weeks into the start of the meteorological spring. Here's the view at 18 GMT on Wednesday the 19th. Now, for much of a month so far, high pressure has been centred to the northeast and the winds have been blowing in off the continent, hence the colder than average conditions. But as I've said already, it is all changed. The Atlantic is coming back for disturbances, queuing up to the west, the southwest, and they are heading our way as the animation shows. So wet and windy periods in all parts of the country at times, but especially the west. As we go into the weekend, the general theme remains the same. There's a drier interlude here, which is shown through Saturday, but then into Sunday, look at the tightly packed icy bars here just to the northwest of the UK and the orange shading indicating very heavy outbreaks of rain. That all moves eastwards, southeastwards quite quickly, then the Atlantic continues to dominate into the other part of the next week. Another little depression moves in across the UK and it could bring some snow to high ground in the north, but rain really everywhere else. Finishing at 03 GMT on Thursday the 27th, it's look west because there are more systems waiting in the wings to bring further spells of rain. Here's the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence. The mottled shaded area shows the track of the jet. Here's the UK. And what you see as I run it is that it remains close by throughout the week. It strengthens and weakens and strengthens. But the general picture being forecast is an unsettled one. Let's have a look at some of the surface forecast charts just to see what that all means. These are generated using the UKV model, the high resolution one provided by the Met Office. Thursday the 20th, temperatures on the left, it's very, very mild indeed. We're seeing values up to about 15 Celsius in parts of central and southern Britain, even in the north, Northern Ireland, Scotland, double figures. So a good deal higher than has been the case recently. On the right, precipitation well, showers or long spells of rain pushing eastwards, but also some drier and brighter interludes. Forwards to Friday, it stays very, very mild indeed, a big contrast with what we've had recently. Also, wet conditions moving eastwards. By Saturday, temperatures have perhaps dipped a degree or so, but well above the average still. It's brighter conditions spreading in from the west, so a drier interlude, which I mentioned, although this indicates that rain could be slow to clear the southeast and East Anglia. By Sunday, double figures still, even in the north and in Northern Ireland, so it's mild, but there are heavy outbreaks of rain, that band of rain moving southeastwards, so staying unsettled. In the following two days, using the GFS charts because UKV doesn't reach as far ahead, 12 Celsius, 13 Celsius showers there in the south, long spells of rain possibly, a few degrees cooler in the north by uh, Tuesday, temperatures perhaps dipping a fraction, but it's staying mild. So very unsettled. And it could well be the strong winds in addition to rain, which has which become the main concern through this period. On the right, on the left, sorry, Wednesday evening and on the right, Friday morning, very strong winds really in the northwest and then more widely across western coastal counties, 50, 60 mile an hour gusts. And then into a Sunday, the strong winds pushing southwards and eastwards. We, the strongest of them staying in the northwest, you can see the purple shading there, but all areas are in for a big change in the weather through the coming days with the wet and windy conditions pushing southwards and eastwards. The Morgreps G wind forecast gust chart for London illustrates things quite well. In the shorter term, 30 mile an hour gusts, perhaps up to 40. It's really that weekend period of 24th where the strong winds extend further southwards and eastwards, so not just affecting the west. This has the 
uh, values between 40 and 50 miles an hour. If each of the individual lines shows one of forecasts from, from a run within the ensemble model. So at this stage, it doesn't look like the winds are going to be a huge concern in the southeast, but it will be a big change from what we've had recently. In the northwest, though, the values are higher. This plot is for uh, Carlisle, so 50 mile an hour gusts there in the coming days. And then into the weekend, that period once more, indicating here that the gust speed speeds could reach around 60 miles an hour. But that's at the top end, a lot of runs between 50 and 55. Rainfall, the 0 to 5 day aggregates from the ECM and GFS models, both are consistent with the idea of a westerly flow becoming, uh, re-establishing itself, the highest values in the west of Britain and Northern Ireland, but even in central and eastern counties, significant amounts of rain look likely. Moving forward to the 0 to 10 day period, the orange shading really starting to become widespread in the west and in Northern Ireland. In central and eastern counties of Britain, the totals have increased, but they are staying lower. Although on the GFS chart on the right, parts of the southeast seeing quite a lot of rain as well. So definitely a much more unsettled theme than we've had recently with the weather coming in from the west. So in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on Wednesday the 26th. There's an Atlantic flow pushing across the UK and a small area of low pressure it was visible on the animation I ran earlier. It's moving northeastwards, bringing some longer outbreaks of rain and the potential for hill snow in the north. The Canadian model shows something similar. The German icon has a deeper area of low pressure to the west, to the southwest. The European model has a less vigorous Atlantic flow. The isobars are further apart. Conversely, the artificial intelligence version of the same model has a more vigorous one with the isobars closer to each other. And finally, the UK Met Office global model, high pressure to the southwest, low pressure to the north. It's a positive North Atlantic oscillation pattern, which all of these models are showing. In other words, look west for our weather. And when that is the case, it's not going to be particularly cold anywhere. The likelihood is that temperatures will be above the average, especially in southern and central regions, perhaps closer to it in the north, but changeable with an ongoing risk of showers or longer spells of rain. Does that continue to be the case as we head through week two? As ever at this range, it's just about the general trends and the probabilities. So I'll start with the 16 day GEFS plot for London, 850 HPI temperatures across the top. The signal is for them to be fluctuating around the average, perhaps just a shade below early on, then through the middle part of the period, climbing a couple of degrees above. In terms of rainfall, lots of spikes showing up throughout the second week, so an ongoing risk. And I purposefully used the word rainfall rather than precipitation on this update because the snow row values are staying very low which suggests that although snow isn't completely out of the question, it is unlikely. The two meter temperature data tables for London dominated through the days with the light green shading, runs which are going for maximums of between six and 10 degrees. The overnight lows, well, lots of, uh, lots of dark green appearing, values between one and five, indicates that during quieter periods, if the sky is clear, ground frost remains a risk. It's a very similar story in Manchester, although the snow row values are somewhat higher. They suggest that snow isn't totally out of the question here, but it's not favoured as a likely scenario. The two metre temperature data tables, the days are dominated by the light greens. The amount of yellow there ticks up a little bit through the second half of the week. Overnight lows, plenty of dark green, a little bit of blue as well. So the same 
theme as on the London data table. If sky is clear, frost will continue to be a possibility. Up to Glasgow, not that much different in terms of the upper air temperature profile. It's fluctuating around the norm. If anything, perhaps a little bit lower than on the Manchester and a London grass, and it just suggests that polar maritime incursions are more likely as you head further north across the United Kingdom. So colder wedges of air coming in from the west or the northwest are more likely to affect Scotland than southern Britain. Precipitation, plenty of spikes, so there's an ongoing risk. And this time I used the word precipitation because the snow row values are high enough to take a little bit of notice. 10 and 12 showing up on a couple of the days would suggest that falling snow at least is quite possible occasionally in this part of the United Kingdom. The two meter, data, two meter temperature data tables, plenty of light green still through the days, but not as much as appeared on the Manchester and London versions. You can see there's more dark green, so quite a few runs are going for daytime maximums are between uh, one and five degrees. The overnight lows, lots of blue showing up. So once more, the story here is that when clear periods come along, frost will be still a significant risk. Rainfall through the second week in more general terms. The charts here show the percentage chance of five millimetres or more falling on the first three days. They're based on data from the ECM ensemble. The orange shading in the west really increasing on the third chart, indicating between 60 and 80 percent chance of that amount of rain falling. The message here is that it's going to be wettest in the west now. Moving forwards to the next three days, not much changes. Plenty of rain looks likely to be falling in Northern Ireland and Western Britain. Somewhat drier as you head into central and eastern areas. But the takeout here is the weather is going to be coming in from the Atlantic. It's reinforcing the message from the other charts which I've been using. The mean surface level pressure data table generated from the GEFS for York also points towards fairly changeable or unsettled weather continuing through the second week. If anything, the signal is for pressure to be lower later on. There's more blue and purple appearing in the columns through the second half of the period. The GEFS snapshot mean surface level pressure chart for Saturday the 1st of March. The Start of the meteorological spring has high pressure centered to the southwest, an Atlantic flow covering the United Kingdom. So it's fitting in quite nicely with the general picture, which is a changeable or unsettled one. So to summarize week one, very mild with spring like temperatures at times. But there will be wet and windy spells in all regions. The wettest conditions are likely to be in the west. Towards the end, temperatures could dip a little, but they probably remain above the average. Week two, quite unsettled. Therefore, showers, longer spells of rain and strong winds continue to be likely. In the north, there could be some snow over high ground temperatures fluctuate around the average. And I think it's just worth mentioning that with the unsettled conditions returning, there is the possibility of a named storm during the forecast period. So uh, there we have it. It's all changed. The quiet and rather cold weather is giving way to milder, wetter and windier conditions. The Atlantic returns. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, then if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Of course, remember to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out 
theweatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.